particular area that drives intellectuals crazy, and that is when they hear Christians talk about the Word of God, the Bible. And I would like you to start us off in this area as to what should a person who embraces Jesus Christ and acknowledges Him to be very God and invites Him to be the Savior of their life to forgive them of their sins when they embrace Christ as Lord and Savior, what view should they also embrace concerning the Bible? Start us off. Well, the simple answer to this question is that the Christian needs to take the same view of the Bible that Jesus took of it. Uh, there is that old line that Jesus is not Lord of all, who is not Lord at all. And it's essential that Jesus approached the Bible become the position of those who believe in him. Uh, and Jesus' position on the Bible uh, is perfectly plain. Uh, this may come as a shock, but Jesus was a fundamentalist when it came to the Old Testament. Uh, he believed the whole thing. Uh, he quoted from uh, all uh, portions of it. Uh, he slapped a quotation from one book right next to a quotation from another. He sometimes blended them. He had absolutely no interest in the sociological or historical circumstances of the writings. Uh, he considered the whole business to have one single author, namely God himself. Uh, when Jesus quotes the Old Testament, he uses the formula, it is written, degroptai. Uh, that's a passive in the Greek with an implied personal agent. And the first nation is God. It is written by God, and therefore it's true. But some people will say, Dr. Montgomery, that um, you know, Jesus was a Jew and was actually talking to other Jews that believed it was the Word of God. And so therefore, he's just accommodating himself to what other Jews believe. He wouldn't go against the grain. Well, that's uh, one version of the uh, infamous kenotic theory or kenosis theory that uh, there is a limitation. Uh, in Jesus. Interestingly enough, the people who maintain this take the things Jesus says as absolute when the things agree with them. But the minute Jesus says something that they don't like, suddenly Jesus is suffering from a limitation. Uh, that uh, makes one wonder about the theory in itself. But let's look at the theory closely. There, there are two versions of it. Uh, one is that Jesus intentionally accommodated himself. The other is that in becoming man, he had to become uh, accommodated. But this occurred uh, apart from any decision on, uh, on his own part. Well, if you say that Jesus accommodated himself, then that means that he committed the worst of all moral faults, that the end justifies the means. He actually gave false information to people, knowing that it was false, but did so just not to disturb them. Okay? Uh, they weren't up to higher criticism at that point, so he goes along with this idea that the Bible is reliable. But uh, uh, this is ridiculous. For one thing, Jesus criticizes his contemporaries right, left, and center on all sorts of things that are basic to them. For example, he goes after the Jewish religious leaders on their view of God. Huh? You think he would do that and accommodate himself on their view of the Bible if that view of the Bible actually uh, had been false? Uh, the other version of this is that in becoming man, he couldn't help himself. In becoming man, he ended up limited to the knowledge of his time. This suffers from extreme uh, fallacy logically. If God becomes man, but in doing so, he is limited to the human sphere of knowledge. The end result is that you get no revelation at all. You'd only get revelation if God remained God in his knowledge when he comes to For example, let's say that I come to Chattanooga, and I have my white beard and my long prophet's robe, and I say, uh, greetings, you thought it was near Montgomery. Not in the slightest. It happens to be God. And then I give a speech containing historical errors, scientific, uh, scientifically erroneous information, and after finishing it, I pick a little dog who's been bothering me. And, and, and you, you, you say to me, is it that I didn't say you were God? I say, certainly, but you don't seem to understand. When God comes to earth, he ends up exactly like anybody else. Of course, uh, your reaction to this is, that kind of a God I can do without. 
because I haven't given you anything that you didn't have to begin with. So, if there is the genuine appearance of God on earth in Jesus Christ, you can rely on what he says. Well, now that we have Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, we find out where God says he does not lie, and then you find in John 8 when Jesus said that he got every word from the Father. Yes, uh, it's really in the 17th century, the philosopher Descartes asked the question, well, maybe God could be a liar, huh? Uh, a cosmic liar, and so he did a little treatise on the subject, but the end result of this was that Descartes realized that if God were a liar, he'd be clever at it than any human being would ever be at detection. So it would be a totally meaningless kind of question anyway. Right? You could never catch him at it. So if you, so if you do come across God, there is no question as to his truth-telling ability. That's the time for you to shut up and listen. The complete series that this clip was taken from is available on DVD, VHS videotape, audio tape, audio CD, and in transcript form. To order, please click the link to the right of this screen.